In this video, we will learn how to create annotations for object classification tasks. Okay, let's get started. Load the images. So I'm loading object detection images. All right, so this time we are choosing object detection. In previous two videos for image classification as well as multi-label classification, we chose image recognition, okay, object detection. And again, let's load the labels from file. So these are the labels. Okay, we have three labels. That's right. And all right. So we can, uh, for object detection task, I mean, we can draw rectangles, we can draw polygons, and uh, for pose estimations, uh, we can draw points, lines, etc. Right. Uh, but we are mainly interested only in rectangles. We can do polygons as well, uh, depending on the model we are training. Um, all right, so let's choose rectangles. Okay, all right. Once we choose the rectangle, uh, you can see uh, uh, the mouse cursor, it become uh, like this plus, okay. Now here we have a couple of uh, utility useful tools like we can zoom into the image uh, we can uh, uh, the hand or we can drag the image left right uh, top or bottom etc right so if the image is low resolution or very small we might want to use uh, some of these tools or maybe if the image is too big we can drag we can move the image so that we have uh, we can see the object clearly okay all right so let's draw some rectangles. Now this one, uh, it has three objects. Uh, it actually has uh, more. I mean, uh, it depends if you want to treat them uh, as objects, but we typically draw these rectangles, right? So we draw these closer uh, rectangular boxes. So that's one object. Now here you can select the label, which is Apple. That's one. And then let's draw one more. Uh, here we are too close to the object so let's push a bit yeah that looks good and that's also apple and then maybe uh, this is clear right so maybe we will draw one more for this one uh, it's difficult so maybe yeah so when objects overlap uh, it becomes quite tricky uh, to do the annotations okay so that's apple um all right same process now it's even challenging for these apples uh, maybe we'll let's do let's try to do this uh, do for this one so we have three sorry bananas uh, it's quite challenging so maybe uh, we'll do like this so that cover one banana all right and then uh, we'll do for the second one so that would be maybe something like this so we start from here that actually covering the third banana as well so that's another one so maybe we can draw one more uh, like this okay yeah so um, as we can see it becomes quite complicated uh, when the objects overlap uh, this one is easy so here we have two objects so let's draw one rectangle for apple so choose apple now well this is not easy <laughs> so here uh, yeah even if you draw the box incorrectly no problem you can uh, move the box you can delete these uh, delete these boxes let me remove this okay and then maybe with the hand can i move the box no let me delete this okay so for this apple we draw box like this now we choose banana Right, so you can 
see these two colors are different right so maybe let's let's try it for this image so that the colors we can see clearly so that's an apple so let's move it a bit sorry it's an apple that's a banana sorry the label should have been apple not apples okay all right and we finally do for banana so that's all right i think they labeled this incorrectly okay if we if we if we select uh, the object from here it's get uh, highlighted with these white uh, uh, points so this one is not banana so let's choose uh, orange for this all right so we have three different colors as you can see i mean uh, the for banana it is a bit more uh, what is this is green this is a bit bluish and this one maybe somewhere in between these two colors okay uh, all right again i'm not going to draw for all those um, maybe for let's do only for this one it's easy so that's a orange that's another orange uh i guess we can draw one for the one in the middle as well so that's another orange okay all right that's how we do the annotations again uh, after we annotate all the images uh, i think it's a good practice uh, to go back uh, and make sure that we have annotated them correctly by uh, quickly going over the images okay once we have completed the annotations uh, go to actions and click on export annotations okay so there are a couple of formats now yolo so unlike the image classification where uh, it was a csv file probably none of the models accept a csv file uh, as a uh, exported from this tool but this yolo format these annotations we can use uh, if you are going to train a yolo model right so we don't need any further uh, any further transformations of the data okay uh, but let's let's go with the csv file uh, because we are not going to train uh, uh, a yolo model we might be training uh, some other model so we'll have the csvs as base or ground truth files and then we convert it to different formats depending on which model we are training so click on export and go to object detection save all right let's look at this file okay this time we have the headings so it's good so for object detection uh, the tool creates the headings but not for image classification so maybe that's something uh, in the next version uh, they will add the headings for classification as well all right so here uh, we have the image name or the file name okay and then we have the label as we have seen uh, each image can contain multiple labels for example this image apple 13 it has three objects or three labels whereas uh, maybe this one this uh, image called uh, mixed uh, it has one two three objects one of them is apple one of them is orange and the other one is banana so it has all three labels this image okay so that's labels and then these two columns those are the image width and image height so it's the full image width and image height and then we have uh, these four coordinates uh, these are uh, for each bounding box okay so these two coordinates those are the top left coordinates so this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate that's the top left corner of the bounding box and then these two represent the box width and the height so if we go back to the image um, so let's say uh, this is our annotation okay this is our bounding box so this coordinate x and y would be this box x and 
bounding box y so it's the top left corner of the coordinates now for images uh, the origins start here uh, not here like in conventional uh, coordinate system okay so it start from here so this is x and this is y okay so and then once we have this coordinate then we have the width of the bonding box uh, the height of the bonding box uh, in y direction those are these two okay so using these four values uh, we can determine the bonding box coordinate now there are various ways to do this i mean again uh, different models expects in different format for example uh, we can have the top left coordinate and then the bottom right coordinate so those four values also enough uh, to infer the bonding box or some models they actually expect uh, the center of the bonding box so two coordinates from here x and y and then half width and half height okay so we have to be a little careful when uh, when we export these annotations and also when we train uh, models we have to make sure that we have we have uh, done the right uh, conversion um, so that we are accurately capturing the bounding boxes all right uh, that's pretty much for today and we have another course on SageMaker where we will be using uh, these csv files uh, generated using uh, the make sense.ai and then we convert them into uh, different ground truth formats expected by different models like uh, uh, SageMaker, inbuilt ssd tensorflow models resnet uh, pytorch etc okay so you might be interested in that uh, SageMaker uh, course as well all right uh, thank you very much